Today, I'm going to teach you how to make a black mead, which is a black currant based mead. Let's get started. Before this video goes too far, I want to have a word from our sponsor. Well, hello there. Let me first start by saying my name is Mr. Starsan. I work for Starsan. And uh, I am very glad you're here. You look like the type of person who needs to sanitize their brews. How do you sanitize, you say? Well, it starts with Star Sand. Star Sand is the number one way to sanitize every brewing piece of equipment you ever need. And take it from somebody who sanitizes lots of brewing equipment. It helps you make better mead. If you watching this video right now do not sanitize your equipment, do not even think about bringing it my way. I will not ever taste something that has not had a proper sanitization method done for it. Pick up yourself some star sand at your local brew shop, your local Amazon shop, or wherever you might buy it, and start sanitizing today. This video was in fact not sponsored by star sand. However, star sand, if you'd like to sponsor me, feel free to call. Thank you, Mr. Star Sand Man. So glad you're here. Thank you for telling us all about Star Sand. Let's go ahead and talk about everything you need to make this brew. First of all, it's all on the screen right now. You need some fermentation vessel. It could be plastic, could be glass, I don't care. It could be a bucket. Make sure that it's sanitized. Always rooting back to sanitizing. You also need some other small equipment. You need a hydrometer, which is a floating specific gravity measuring device. You need a tube to float that hydrometer in. You need an auto siphon and tubing. Um, it won't hurt you to have a couple different varieties of airlock if you can do it. So this is a S airlock, which is great for long-term storage because stuff that's inside of it does not evaporate as quickly, which is nice. The, there is this three-piece airlock, which is also nice. Um, you can clean this one pretty easily. Works well, but everything evaporates a little faster out of that. And the last one I love the most is the waterless airlock. This uses pressure. Whenever the pressure builds up enough, it just auto burps itself and it doesn't require any water. It's nice. That's what's on here right now. So what the heck is a black current? Let me tell you about it. A black current is the black current, also known as black current or casis, probably got that wrong, is a decadent shrub in the, in the family Grossularisae, grown for its edible berries. It's a berry. So we call this a black mead. It's really a black currant mead. It's black currant based. The way I made this was not with real, air quote, real uh, black currants. This is black currants, basically the wine base. So it is black currant. It's just, uh, someone already did the work for me. This is about five gallons worth of black currant wine. We weren't making the wine, we were making a mead. So we were missing the honey. We'll talk about that in a second. You've probably waited for a taste test. What does this taste like? Ooh, it's got like a very dark cherry, little tart side. The honey in here is really nice. It kind of provides some warm floral side, some little brightness to contrast the darkness. This thing was oaked, so it has some oaky notes as well. It's pretty fantastic. All right, so how do you make this thing? Get your ingredients, get your equipment. Here are your ingredients right on the screen. I used 25.6 ounces of this black currant base, which is right here. I also did uh, added water up to a gallon, 1.5 pounds of avocado blossom honey, two grams of Lauven D47, which is a wonderful wine yeast, um, about one teaspoon of Fermate O. There's more technical ways to measure out your Fermate O, but I'm lazy. So one point or one teaspoon, which is not a lot of Fermate O as a yeast nutrient, super, super important. We ended up stabilizing with uh, our uh, potassium sorbate and potassium metabisulfite, worked really well. And then uh, we back sweetened with another half pound of honey. Oh, and oak, we used an oak spiral. We'll talk about that in a second. So you're gonna mix your starting ingredients up your black currant, your uh, water, excuse me, uh, the yeast, the honey, it's gonna go into some fermentation vessel. Of course, assuming you have something like glass or whatever, you just put it in there and, and uh, shake it up or paddle it up as I did. Once you've mixed everything in, this is called the primary fermentation. This is where a bulk of the fermentation occurs 
you were going to take a gravity reading before you uh, let the primary fermentation start. That's where your hydrometer and your your tube co <laughs> come into play. So I took a gravity reading of this. The starting gravity, or original gravity, is 1.060. The uh, gravity after it finished fermenting, after about 15 days of fermenting, um, which is a time when it bubbles up and you see CO2 bubbles rise and your airlock, if you're using one of these, will bubble. Essentially, it's the yeast eating the sugar, converting it to alcohol. The gravity after the primary was 1.0, well, sorry, 1.000, so it fermented completely out. So, once that was done, I said, all right, I'm ready to go ahead and move this into a new container. We took it and moved it from container A into container B, and of course, that was sanitized. Thank you, Star Sand. And uh, we used our auto siphon tubing, all of those things. Um, this sat for a little while just to kind of chill out. Basically, at that point, um, at the point after the primary, it's a little bit odd tasting. In fact, I got a little tasting note after the primary. Here it is. You might be asking the question, what does this taste like out of primary? I'll tell you. I haven't done a lot with black currant, but it's very cherry-like, very black cherry, dark cherry-like. It has a pretty weak body, to be honest. Well, I say that, it's actually not bad. It's got a little viscosity to it. Um, the prominent black currant flavor is really nice. It needs some sweetness from honey to help really uh, give it more body, give it more flavor. It's actually not bad for being four weeks old. So let's go on to the next steps. So that's what it tasted like after the primary. It's still young, probably yeasty. It's got some problems. Um, I was like, ah, oh, okay, this, this is okay. It's pretty tart and might need some help. It didn't have a lot of tannic value. Tannic value is the mouth feel. If you think about drinking water, water goes straight down. If you think about drinking a red wine, it kind of pulls moisture out of your mouth. It kind of uh, makes your mouth uh, feel a little different. Everything you drink in the world has some sort of tannic value, and water is like zero tannic tannin. So you want a little bit of uh, wash, a little bit of something to like linger. So it needed some tannic value. The way I thought about adding this was with a sugar maple light toast oak spiral. So I threw one of these bad boys into there, um, and I let it set for four weeks. This sat in for four weeks in extracted oak flavor, which uh, helped out with the tannic value, gave it some more bright oakiness, kind of made it honestly feel more uh, mature, more uh, interesting. So that sat in for four weeks. I then said, all right, now it's, it's a little too tart. It's got this nice tannic value, it's got this oakiness, it's got the tartness, it's got the fruitiness, but it needs some sweetness. So we said, let's go ahead and stabilize it. I stabilized it with potassium sorbate and potassium metabisulfite, which are two things used for stabilizing in home brewing. They are uh, wonderful, they, they basically make the area where the yeast are at non, uh, a, a, not a great place for them to try and ferment again. So, halted fermentation, you can halt fermentation in a couple other ways, pasteurizing, cold crashing, which is temporary. Please do not think it's permanent. Don't be an idiot. Cold crashing, which is the, the act of putting something into cold chamber, temporarily stops fermentation, not permanently. Um, or a ton of time. And even time is iffy. So other pasteurization methods. Pasteurized it, or stabilized it rather, and added half a pound of avocado blossom honey back to it. This brought up the sweetness, made it really nice, and made it great. I'm about two weeks out from adding the avocado blossom honey. This is super roasty. It's got a nice um, uh, dark, cherry dark fruitiness to it. That berry is very, very interesting. And I like it quite a bit. This thing, I think with even more age, is just gonna mellow out. We are currently only a month and a half old, so we're really not that old. And uh, the, the, the thing is, the final gravity, I also forgot to mention this. You take your original gravity, 1.060, you take it after the primary, 1.000. I stabilized it, so there could be no re, uh, re-fermentation, and added the honey. The final gravity is 
eight. So we have a little sweetness there to help support the brew. I find this to be fantastic. I have another black currant mead going, um, and I'm very excited for that one because, it, well, it has it has a some different things going on with it. This base, wine base, is very, very nice. Can you go and buy a bunch of black currants and juice them yourself and do all that? Absolutely. I live in Oklahoma. You know what Oklahoma has? Not black currants. So this is the best choice that I had for this. If you have availability to get a black currant in some form or fashion, do it. Uh, the recipe is what I just said is here. If you're interested in doing this, I highly suggest to do it. I think this is an incredible experience. This black mead is a, uh, it's pretty interesting. And I have some, some fun ideas for adding varieties to it. So I, I think it's worth it. Once you get to this point, I should also mention, when you're ready to finish this brew, you can bottle it. You need a couple other things. You need a bottling wand. You need bottles. You need caps or corks. You need a capper and a corker and all these other things. Essentially, that's the time to, to put it away, to give away to people, or to just store. Could you store it like this in this gallon fermenter? Absolutely. Would I do it forever, especially with this amount of uh, air on top? Probably not. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. Please, 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 please sanitize your equipment. Um, I see a, I live here on YouTube, believe it or not. And I see a lot of amazing mead makers and winemakers and beer brewers. And I see some people who are not as amazing, who are not practicing good methods. I sure hope that you're picking up good methods from people. If you see something that's a little bit sketchy on a YouTube video, ask a question. So um, thank you for watching. Hit like, subscribe, all that stuff. I got a lot of other meads coming up. Um, I have a ton of meads in the past if you ever wanna know how to make a mead. I've made about every freaking thing you can think of. So I'll catch you next time.